Hi, so I'm a little bit different here. So um, my name's Siobhan Tui smith and I'm here to talk to you today about what we do uh, regulating labour market statistics. So some of you may have heard of us, the Office for Statistics Regulation, and some of you may wonder what on earth we do. So um, first of all, why should you care? So here at the Office for Statistics Regulation, we care a lot about statistics and data. They're key, as you all know, to understanding what's going on in the labour market, understanding what types of people are doing what types of jobs, understanding how schools are performing. These are all things that we all want to understand. And also, when government does a policy change, like it changes the way it does the welfare system, we want to understand what the impact of that might be on disabled people or might be on lone parents. So it's really important. So here at the Office for Statistics Re Regulation, we want to try and ensure that statistics and data are out there to help people to understand these things. Specifically, my team focuses on labour market and welfare statistics, which is why I'm here today. And I'm also here today because we like hearing from statistics users. So that's where we get a lot of our information and intelligence and we can really understand where the data and statistics are working and are meeting these aims. So I'm keen to share with you what we do and also how you can get involved if you want to. So as I said, I'll start off by just telling you a bit about who we are, why we do what we do and how we do it. Um, I'll then talk a bit about how we regulate labour market statistics because it's more than just the LFS and the TLFS. But I will then move on to focus on the work we're doing on those two surveys, bearing in mind this is an LFS user, user conference. So who are we? So we're that little box, the blue box in the corner. So we are part of the UK Statistics Authority, which also includes ONS. However, we don't report to ONS, uh, we report to a chair, the chair of the UK Stats Authority. We have a separate board who's made up of a number of non-executive directors, including David Spiegelhalter and a, a number of other people. You can see them on our website, there's a link to the membership. Um, we uh, don't produce any statistics ourselves. We're here to promote and safeguard the production and publication of official statistics. Um, we regulate both the ONS, so we regulate the statistics that ONS produces, but we also regulate statistics produced by other official bodies, so including <coughs> departments like the Department for Work and Pensions, and also some kind of more arm's length bodies like the Environment Agency. So I should probably say um, our role is actually set out in statute. So the Statistics and Registration Act 2007 sets out what we do. So that act says that we are here to set a statutory code of practice for statistics, um, to assess compliance with that code, and also to accredit official statistics that do comply fully with the code. So this is kind of part of how statistics are produced. And I should probably say that also in statute, our scope is about something called official statistics. It's quite a technical term. Basically what that means are statistics produced by government bodies and some crown bodies. Um, in practice, because a lot of users don't really get that distinction, they're like, well, it's a number, it comes out of an official organisation, surely you cover it. We do sometimes look at some wider information and numerical information where appropriate. And I should also say the last one, so well, how statistics are used, this is about um, a statutory role we have where people can report concerns to us. So we call it our casework function, but this is where any member of the public, MPs, anyone can write to us and say, so-and-so over there used a number, we don't know where it came from, or they used it inaccurately, could you investigate this for us and let us know what the outcome is. And then lastly, we also look at how statistics are valued. That's because our aim is to ensure that statistics serve the public good. So if we're going to do that, we need to understand what does the public good look like. So we carry out research to kind of understand what people and users of statistics think of when we talk about the public good. So here's a bit more about our vision. This is why we do what we do. So we're here to make sure that statistics serve the public good. So we want to enhance understanding on topics of high public interest. So where there's a lot of interest in a new area, we want to make sure the data and statistics are out there to help people understand what's going on. Um, to inform decisions, so we want to make sure that you know, government decisions, where to build houses, where to you know, do things, is actually informed by evidence. Um, and we also want to allow people to hold government to account. So as I said at the start, so if there's been a new policy change, you need the data to understand what the impact of that change has been, and then you and others can use that data to kind of hold government to account. As it says at the bottom, in a world of abundant data, as we all know, there's loads of data available out there. We want people to have confidence in the statistics produced by the public sector. Um, I just screenshotted a bit of our website here, and the reason is this is the code of practice for statistics. So this is kind of at the heart of all our regulatory work. 
So when data is everywhere and people are sceptical, it's more important than ever that there's something that gives people confidence in statistics. So that's where the code comes in. The code is central to everything that we do. And we see its potential to be a go-to guide for any public organisation publishing statistics. So I'm going to spend a bit of time just saying what's in the code, just so you understand, because that basically everything we regulate comes back to the code. So if it's in the code, then we'll look at it. So we have what we call the three pillars of the code. So we talk about the trustworthiness of statistics, we talk about the quality of the statistics, and we talk about their value. You have these little boxes which set out the specific practices that sit underneath each of these pillars. I think it's also important to flag up that we have a number of kind of cross-cutting themes. So transparency cuts across all of this. So transparency in terms of statistical plans, transparency in terms of what are the strengths and limitations of the data that you're using, and then transparency in terms of um, how you're going to engage with users. And I should also say that engaging with users is also a cross-cutting theme because I think whenever you're producing or communicating statistics, users have to be at the heart of what you're doing. So in a transformation program like the uh, TLFS, understanding user needs is really crucial right from the start all the way through to then what you actually put into the public domain and when you begin getting that feedback from your users. And the other cross-cutting theme is collaboration. I almost forgot that one. Um, so that's another one. So we want to see people collaborating when producing and communicating statistics. As I mentioned, just to do them in a little bit more detail, so trustworthiness, so it's about the people and the organisations that produce the statistics and data. So as I said, it's about the plans, it's about orderly release, it's about the professional capability of those producing it. And then quality for anyone, well, you probably all are, researchers like me, uh, well, that's my background anyway. Quality is kind of the bread and butter of what we do. It's about the data, it's about the methods, it's about how you quali quality assure the outputs when you get them. Do you compare them to other data sources like, I don't know, workforce jobs or RTI to see whether it looks reasonable what you're actually seeing at the output? As we all know, if you see something unusual and new, it probably isn't unusual and new. There's probably something that's gone slightly wrong. And then value. So value is about ensuring that statistics support society's needs for information. So again, it comes back to understanding what users actually need, what they want, and then producing things. Obviously, there's a resource side to this as well, because you have to do this within your resource envelope. But it's about being clear about what priorities have been made and why. And then lastly, how do we do it? So we've got all these little bits. I should probably say we're only around 50 people. So we're quite small um, in comparison to the rest of the UK Stats Authority. But we have our regulatory work that I've spoken about. So this is where we have the code and we assess different sets of statistics against the code to decide, are they good enough? Should they have this badge? Used to be called the National Statistics Badge. It's now called Accredited Official Statistics. So we refer to accreditation normally now. Also under our regulatory work, as I mentioned, people write into us with queries, with concerns, and then we investigate them. And then we will respond to those queries, sometimes publicly, sometimes privately. Um, we have a kind of interventions policy that sets out how we determine whether or not we write a public letter or not. Um, we also work with a number of organisations who are outside of our official scope, but still want to voluntarily apply the code because they see its benefits in terms of being transparent with their users about how they do things, and they think it kind of gives them a benefit when they produce the statistics. We also do uh, research into what does the public good mean, and there's a bit of a blog on our website at the moment about that. Uh, we do work around data and methods, kind of investigating, particularly at the moment, AI and how that fits within the code and how that fits within the statistical system and what the kind of the pros and cons of it are. And then policy and standards and insight. And I should probably say one of our other key themes at the moment is around something called intelligent transparency. So this is where we're working across government and across the communications profession across government to try and encourage the release and communication of data to be done in an intelligent and transparent way. So basically you put a number out there, you source where has that number come from, you provide any context that's relevant to help understand the number. And also it's done in a way that is separate from political interference. So you might have your policy statement, but then alongside that you'll have another ad hoc release, we quite often call them, which actually sets out all the data and is very separate from any kind of political language. So that's quite an important thing. So that's that. Okay, so as I mentioned, my team regulate labour market statistics. So we cover quite a broad range of statistics. So it's labour market and welfare. So we cover kind of jobs, earnings, benefits. So here are just some of the examples. So have you seen, I've got a couple of green, uh, screenshots of some of the ONS statistics that we cover. So labour market overview, um, average weekly earnings, but also some of the DWP statistics that we cover. So universal credit and family resources survey. And these are just some of them. There are many, many more. 
that we cover. And then here's some examples of what we do. So when we carry out our regulatory work, on the left-hand side, um, this is from something we call a compliance check. This is basically where we review a set of statistics against just certain bits of the code, so not the whole code, just certain bits, maybe where someone's raised a concern with us or some of our intelligence suggests there might be something that needs to be looked into. <laughs> so we'll look at those statistics against those bits of the code and come up with some recommendations for the department to put in place to deal with the issue. Uh, we'll also set out where things, um, where there are areas of good practice, so just to kind of provide that balance. And then on the right hand side here we have where we've done a full assessment, so this is where we assess a set of statistics against all bits of the code and determine whether or not they can be accredited official statistics. So if something has our accreditation badge on it, it means that we have done this external verification, we have checked that the statistics are trustworthy, they're of high quality and they're of value. Um, so here we looked at the personal independence payment statistics, that was earlier this year. We have got one requirement on the DWP at the moment, which they're currently looking into implementing. Assuming they do implement that in full, then we will look to accredit those statistics at the point when they've done that. And then here again, two of the other types of work we do. So on the left, we've got something called a review of income-based poverty statistics. So this is where we do some kind of systemic reviews, so where there's a topic of interest which covers a large number of different statistics. So this was lots of different statistics in that area of poverty that we looked at, and we come up with some recommendations that normally cut across a number of departments to try and make that work better. We'll talk to users as part of that review, so users are very much at the heart of everything we do, um, and we'll be doing a progress update against that report shortly to see how um, DWP, HMRC and ONS have been getting on with the recommendations. And then on the right-hand side, we have something that I mentioned. So this is where we use our voice. So when someone writes into us, says something's gone wrong with statistics, we investigate it and we go, yeah, you know what, something has gone wrong. And then we will write publicly and say, that, you know, this is what's happened, this is what's gone wrong, please could you put in place these things to do it. Or in some cases, thanks for already doing X, Y and Z to make this issue dealt with. Um, so, as I said, sometimes we write publicly, sometimes we don't. Um, in this instance, it was an MP that wrote to us. So when MPs write to us, we will always publish that. Um, sometimes when we just get um, individuals writing to us, depending on the public interest of the issue, we may just deal with it privately, it varies, but we do have a <coughs> lot on our website of all our cases that we're dealing with. Okay, so probably what you've all been waiting for, so I should probably hurry on to it, so I don't run out of time, and I should have said at the start, if you have any questions, I am going to try and finish a little bit early, so, and obviously everyone's going to want the break as well. So spotlight on LFS and TLFS. So our regulatory work to date, so this is what we've been doing. So as you will see in 2022, kind of aligning with James's slides around the dual running beginning. So we announced that we were going to do a review again for the TLFS. It's a slightly different type of review. So normally we have a set of statistics and then we assess them against the code. However, in this instance, we don't have a set of statistics yet because they're being developed. So yeah. So what we do is we go in and we kind of work with the producer to try and ensure things in the code are adhered to while they're doing the transformation. Things like user engagement, things like transparency um, are all part of it as they go along. And then in November we published our initial findings. Uh, July we did a progress update against that. And then I think this November 2023 when obviously the issues with the LFS came about um, and we... Uh, removed the badge from the LFS because we said, you know, they can't be accredited official statistics anymore, there are these issues with it, you can't have the badge anymore. And we also reviewed what they've begun using instead, the experimental statistics. In March, they reintroduced the LFS derived labour market statistics, however, um, the badge still remains not on at this point um, until ONS is happy that the statistics are good enough. They're obviously still implementing their improvement plan at the moment, so they're not there yet. I'm coming towards the end, so I don't want to take too long. So this is just our report. Just, I guess the main thing to say here is that we will be going back and looking at the TLFS again. Exactly when is to be confirmed, depending on the timelines of the decommissioning decision and the work on the TLFS. So we're not entirely sure yet when. Maybe towards the back end of this year, there'll be something that, to be confirmed. What we will be doing is, as I said, we did a review of the reintroduced LFS data in March. We came up with a number of requirements. A lot of these are around communication about and responding to user need for more time series data, communicating what's happening with the LFS and the TLFS in a way that users know what to expect when, improved communication around uncertainty, so the use of the term volatility across the LFS uh, publication. What do you actually mean by that and what does it mean for how people use it? 
um, a more consistent approach to communicating data quality and again the quality criteria so publishing how are you going to determine when you're going to switch off the LFS and move to the TLFS what are, what are those quality criteria and are it, is it clear to the public um, we're going to go back and look at what ONS is doing to meet these requirements over the summer and then we'll publish our update and this is probably where I want to stress uh, that we want to talk to users about that because we will be coming out to users in June so if anyone has any thoughts please let us know my email address is at the end um, just some quick and common themes. These slides will be circulated and are on the website. These are some of the themes that have come up across our TLFS and LFS reviews. They're also some of the themes that quite often we see when we're reviewing transformation work. So being clear about what's happening, being joined up about what's, ha what's happening with the old survey and the new survey, and also the UK approach, because there's a UK aspect here. Talking to users, I bang on about this all the time, and what's the quality criteria. So what we're going to do next, so we're going to continue engaging with ONS as they continue on their transformation or development journey, both supporting and challenging. As I mentioned, we've got an update in the summer on LFS and further engagement with users. So yeah, any comments about the TLFS or the LFS, let me know. The slides are already published on the website, including the email address that you can drop a line to and then it will get sent to my team. Thank you and sorry for the rush at the end.